बेलहे बहुशंगे I thank the Creator, I thank the Great Spirit, and I thank our ancestors for this day. My name is Sweetwater Nana. I'm from the Killing Whale Clan of the Simpsian Nation from Alaska. My father's from the Raven Frog Clan of the Tlingit Nation. I'm the grandchild of the Glacier People Clan. And my great grandmother, Gay Fiddy Claw, was a precious grandchild of the Upper Living People Clan of the Stikine River. Well, the song I started out with was is a Copper River song. It comes from the Copper River People. Up there by uh, Alaska, we had many trade routes. We, we traded, had alliances with, and so they gifted us to the, to the Tlingit people the song. And we sing that when we come to ceremonies, to gatherings, when we're on canoe journeys. It's an outside song, we, we call it. We sing it outside and tell our hosts to invite us in. And to let them, we let them know as we get, as they get closer, it gets a little louder each time that it's being shown that we're coming in. And, um, and the, the words, um, as I understood, that was taught to me, means there's no water too wide, no mountain too high for us to come visit our loved ones. And so, so it's a good day to be here. It's good to see the, the young people, our young ones, standing strong in their culture, in their language. And, and uh, it lifts our heart, our spirits, and that's why we're here. That's why we do this work. So it's an honor to, to see our young ones here, honor to see our elders here. And uh, knowing that our ancestors are here too with us. So I'll just share a little bit of stories with you. Um, I was blessed to be raised very old fashioned way by my Tlingit grandparents. We had an arranged marriage. We just openly link it to each other. And about 95% of our food was the food we gathered and prepared ourselves. And our people still live this way in Alaska too. And then um, we taught to honor our, our ways from my from my grandparents too, and learning who our remembering who our stories are, our, where we come from. You know, so I'll share you with this uh, a story about the raven. Because when we go on ceremonies and canoe journeys and come into other people, we always we always uh, acknowledge our connections to them. And so with these stories, we're honoring our connection. Yesterday, I told a story about the first killer whale. This story will be from my father's clan, the Raven people. And a um, long time ago, the earth was covered with water. And there was a raven. There's many ravens, too. There wasn't just one raven. There's a creator raven. 
the dark people uh, say was the raven above the Nass River. That's where people originated, was between the Skeena and the Nass River. He was a trickster raven, and he was the one who does, stole the sunlight, stole the stars, stole the moon. He was always hungry, he was always scheming. So this one I'm talking about is the creator raven. And so long ago when the earth was covered with water, the raven was flying around. And he seen this beautiful mermaid, this fish woman, half woman, half fish. And he wanted to marry her. He came down and talked to her and proposed to her. But she says, well, I want, I want some land so I can sit up on the rocks and, and dry off sometimes and, and pull my hair in the sunlight. And so a raven was scheming on how can he get land? How can he make land? And so he's seen uh, the seal swimming around. And back then, the seal had no, no fur on him. And then he came up and asked the seal, hey, can you go down and get some sand, get some, some rock down at the bottom of the sea and bring it back up to me so I can make some land? I'll grant you a wish, whatever wish, whatever it is you want. And so the seal thought for a moment and he said, well, I think I'd like a nice warm coat to keep me warm in these cold waters. He said, okay. Get me some of that sand, it'll be yours. So the seal went down, and down at the, the sea there he ran into Prague. And he came unprepared, so he asked Prague. Um, you know, the raven said he'll give you anything you want, he just wants some of that sand, that dirt there. And so the frog told him, well, if you're at the wishes, tell him, I want to be made the keeper of Earth's treasures once and for all. So the seal went back up and talked to Raven and said, the frog can, the frog can get you that sand, that, that dirt you need. He wants you to make him keeper of Earth's treasures once and for all. And so, so Raven told him, well, tell him to give me that sand, and it will be so. And so he went back down there all the whole time thinking, gee, I should have asked for more than just a warm coat. And so he got there and the, the frog, you know how they shed their skin, he had some old uh, frog skins laying around. He filled it up with some sand on the dirt, he gave it to Seal, and Seal swam back up and gave it, gave it to Raven. And Raven took it and he flew up high, flew up real high where the wind is blowing from the north and let it go, and go flying around dropping it. And where there's big rocks fall, those were the big mountains that formed. The smaller ones formed the sands, the islands covered in the heavy mother earth. So he married married that that um, fish woman, the mermaid, people call him. And from them came the uh, great raven clan. So that's our, our connection to that, to the raven. When I've told this story to uh, youth, I do storytelling sometimes to native youth and, and ask them, what do you think our keeper, what, what do you think are those, uh, those treasures of the earth are? And one little girl raised her hand and I said, yeah. And she said, we are. I thought that was a good answer. <laughs> our children are precious. They are precious treasures of this earth. So it lifts my heart to see such young people here. And thank you, uh, Sean and all the committee here and everyone put this together. So we can enjoy and see uh, the strength in their songs, the pride in their language and who they are. For, for them, they're, you know, they're our hope for our future. So I'll just share another story with you about um, where our people came from. Uh, thousands of years ago, as I said, we lived between the Skeena and Nass River up in uh, British Columbia. And um, one of my, my ancestors' clan is from the Wolf Clan. My father is from the Raven Clan. And there's several migrations up to Alaska. There wasn't just one. So many of the clans have their different stories of their migration. And so our, our family, this is our story, the Wolf Clan, because there was already a, a Raven Clan who, who migrated up to the Stikine River. That's my father's clan. They're one of the oldest uh, Raven Clans. And, um, so anyway, this Wolf Clan, they migrated up from the Skeena and Nass River. And as they were going along, they came upon this glacier it's on the Stikine there. Yeah, we'll do some of those. Some, once they got there, they, you know, they took them a long time just to walk all that way. And so they didn't know what to do. They stopped there for a while, uh, debating what, what was the next step. 
It would take too long for them to head back to where they came from. And so pretty soon these two elders, Uushtaski and Kawasi, volunteered to go under the glacier to find a way for our people to go under and continue on that path down that river. And they told our young men, they said, you know, we are old already. We've lived our lives. And we, we want you to stay here and take care of our families, take care, care of the women and the children. The clan, we need to make sure we continue on. You know, we, we, if anything happens to us, it's okay. We've lived our life. And so they tied some sticks on their arms, one up above their head because it's dark, and they felt their way under the glacier. They did find a way and they came back and got the rest of our people. And so they, they went under the glacier. They continued down the river. They split up the whole clan. Some of them continued on down the river and made their house at the beach and in the sands. So they became known as Apokalevi, the Outer Sands people. The other half, they made their house farther up the river, up, up above the, uh, the Ravenclaw, and had already made their house, and so they made their house farther up. So they became known as the uh, Manyai, the Upper Living People Clan. So later on, um, the Dakhla Wedi, they migrated up farther up Alaska, and our Nanyayi stayed where we're at there in the Sikkim. But it's important that we know these uh, relationships. You know, when I introduce myself as I did today uh, to elders in Alaska, they know exactly who my family is, they know who my grandmother is, my auntie, and they know where we come from. So it's important that we always have that, that balance and connection to who we are. So we've been there thousands of years. Um, we have um, right there in the Stikine, there's petroglyphs. I think they're over 10,000 years old. They say they, that we have markings there that we've been there before the pyramids, the Great Pyramids. We have stories of during the Great Flood, uh, the highest mountain where our people lived. During the Great Flood, um, a grizzly bear and a mountain goat led our people up the mountain and helped save us. And so after that, they became our pest, the grizzly bear and the mountain goat. And, uh, and later, when the water receded, there were some other people there with us too, um, from the Haida Nation. And so they came and they stayed, they stayed, they made a village close to our people, the Kikwan people. And they became, because that mountain, we called that mountain after the great flood, Pesh the mountain that saved mankind. And so that Haida people, when they came down, came down the mountain too, they, they uh, started their village. They, they called themselves the Tuskwee, the people of Tusk, to commemorate that. So it's important to know these things, you know, a lot of these. When I moved down from Alaska to Seattle, I have a lot of cousins who've lived here, uh, moved down here, and they would come to me and ask me about uh, how can they get, get their kids uh, trinket names. I told them, you know, back then, I was going to talk to Grandma Betty. She's our elder. But I thought about it, and so I decided to call all our elders in our, our family and write down the names, what the names mean, who had the name before them, and who those names belong to now. So I got four pages of these names, and so we can't, we don't lose who we are where we come from, passing on those names. So I just want to I'm you know, thinking about, I guess it's my being here today is our young people, the next future generations, it's important. And I can see uh, how bringing this, this good work in medicine has lifted our spirits today. So I thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, JR. Thank you all who, who uh, volunteered to put this together. So I'm going to finish up uh, dancing out of the house song, we call it. <laughs> I didn't bring a drum. I think our drummers are gone. That's okay. You can, you can imagine them playing a drum. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for listening to my words. You can join in this part with me. Hoo ha, hoo ha, ya away. Hoo ha, hoo ha, ya away. Hoo ha, hoo ha, ya 